Welcome back to Tightwad Workshop. In this video, we're going to make a uh, sharpening station to hold our stone and a strop for, for sharpening chisels and plane blades. To do this, we're going to need a suitable piece of plywood with enough room to fit our stone and the strop. The strop is going to be a piece of leather glued to a board. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut the board to the same length as the stone. It's raining outside today, so I'm afraid we're stuck in here working in the studio. I'll use a bench hook and our new tenon saw. As you can see, those nice fine teeth on the tenon saw give a much smoother cut than we'd get with our panel saw. <coughs> I like to work from left to right, so I'm going to put the stone here on my left and the strop on my right. Of course, if you're the other way around, prevent the stone and strop from moving around on our board, we're just going to make a perimeter of some little strips of wood. It's best to move the stone when you're nailing near it, as it'll easily crack if you hit it. Well that's a good start, but we can't strop on the wood, so we're going to need to put some leather on this. I harvested this leather from an old lounge chair that someone had abandoned on the side of the road. It's been outdoors for a, at least a few months, but it's still in good enough shape for what we want to do. We're going to glue the smooth side to the wood and have the coarse side out. Let's mark a line around that, a little bit bigger than what we need, and cut it out with some scissors. It's easier to cut this bigger and glue it on and then trim the edge. I'm just going to use some simple contact adhesive. Put the contact adhesive on both the, uh, the leather and the wood. Make sure you spread it with your finger so that your finger gets all sticky and you're going to spend a few days picking all the glue off it. Leave the glue for a few minutes to get tacky. It's now a few minutes later and the glue has started to tack. So we very carefully because we only get one try at this. Lay it down and smooth from one end to the other. Then place a heavy weight on it and let it finish drying. In the great tradition of every TV cooking show ever, here's one I prepared earlier. You normally don't use the strop dry. You would put some sort of buffing compound on. I usually use a block of this stuff, which is used by people who are using buffing wheels for polishing. However, I've also heard that toothpaste can work. So this seems like a good time to try. Squeeze out a good blob of toothpaste and rub it into the leather. I'm going to hone the edge of this brand new Stanley chisel. These chisels are coated in a rust preventative lacquer which also covers the cutting edge. They will cut in their current state but not very well. The honing process works in three stages. 
Right now our chisel is at stage A. It has a 25 degree bevel at the tip. A brand new oil stone will soak up oil like a sponge. This one ended up using almost the entire bottle of oil. The chisel already has an accurately ground 25 degree bevel. We're going to hone a 30 degree micro bevel onto the tip of that bevel. Do this by resting the chisel on its bevel, then lifting the handle very slightly. Then push the chisel straight forward, holding it at that angle. You can see the new bevel being formed and the blades developed a wire edge on the back side. This means our chisel is now at stage B with a 30 degree angle at the point and a wire edge. Flip the stone over onto its fine side and oil it until the stone is saturated. Lay the back of the chisel flat on the stone, then rub it back and forth to flatten the back and remove the wire edge. As you can see, these chisels already have nice flat backsides. Hone the edge in the same way as before. This will leave you with a smaller wire edge on the chisel blade. This brings the chisel up to stage C with a small wire edge to be removed on the strop. Next, lay the flat side of the chisel on the strop and draw it back towards you while applying a little pressure. This will bend the wire edge back the other way. Turn the chisel over and repeat the stropping process several times until you can't feel the wire edge on either side of the chisel. This now leaves our chisel at stage D with the wire edge removed and the bevel polished on the strop. The fully masculine sharpness check traditionally involves shaving your arm with the chisel. But I prefer to make some cuts on a piece of wood. I honed and stropped the other three chisels off camera. It turns out that the toothpaste works better than a dry strop, but not as well as a proper buffing compound. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.